for anything that we want to do, we just need to use functions in new packages. That function is called fuzzy match function or fuzz dot ratio. Okay. Fuzz dot ratio. And fuzz is imported from fuzzy woozy package. What is fuzz dot ratio? It compares two strings and give me, gives you the similarity scores. If you put uh, Alibaba and Alibaba here, it will give you a score of 100, indicating that the two strings are exactly the same. What if you put Alibaba two A's? Are they similar? Probably. Yes, they are similar. And if they're in different databases, are they indicating the same company? Probably. It's probably because one database is, you know, data entry, that worker is entering the firm name wrong. It's very possible. As you download a lot of data, you will find that those data are not perfect. They have a lot of problems. So if you use a fuzzy fuzz dot ratio, it will give you a similarity score of 93. And this is partial ratio. The different ratios give very different algorithm to calculate. And for this partial ratio, it gives a score of 100, indicating that if one string is a part of another string, then it's 100. What if I change this to this? It will still be 100. But what if we do this? It's going to be 100 because this, the second string is a part of the first string. But what if, if we do this? Then they are not a part of each other. So it has a ratio of 86, but they're still I would say pretty similar. Uh, we also have other um, uh, ratios uh, calculated according to different algorithms. There is one thing that to be noted for using this fuzzy woozy package. That is, it distinguishes the uppercase and lowercase letters. Just want to make sure that this is still recording here. Yes. If you use Alibaba here, as humans, we all know that these two are the same, right? But it will give you a zero score because uppercase letter and lowercase letter are different in Python. If you want to correct this, what do you do? You want to use another method of a string, dot lower. If you have ABC and you use dot lower, okay, this is the method as it has uh, parentheses after it. It will have, it will return you ABC. If you use A, B, C, D, E, F, G H I. It still will give you all the lower case, retaining the previously um, obtained lower cases. And if you want to turn it to uppercase, you can use upper. Okay, this is one function that you can use. So now, if you want to compare the two. Um, if you want to merge the two data, you can do this. For each of the company here, you can compare each one. Well, actually, the fuzzy woozy now has a much more, sim much more, uh, much simpler function to use. But here, for to 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 illustrate, like to explain how we do this, I still use a very old version of code. Okay. For 
each of the acquired firm, like this firm, we go through from this firm to this firm to this firm. For every firm, you know, we have 10,000 functions. For every firm, we calculate its fuzzy scores. And then we calculate, we see whether the fuzzy score is high enough to make it be listed here, okay? And we can create a, um, a pair of firms for similarity check. Then there is another problem. For every, if for every firm name, you need to match 100,000 different strengths, different firms, then we have nearly 900 firms. For 900 firms, each one with 100,000, that's going to be 90 million pairs, right? For 90 million pairs, even, even this like 0 0.01 second to process one pair for Python, it's going to take a lot of time. So in practice, there is a trick. That is, you first consider, you first compare the first letter of this two string. If the first letter is different, like this is S and this is C, you don't even have to calculate the fuzzy ratios. You can just basically skip it. Because if the first letter is different, it's very unlikely that it is the first, it, it, they, they are the same string, they are the same firm. Okay. Now let's do it. First, uh, this is a path of, uh, of this, the path of this um, folder. And in this folder, I read the two databases. One, I name it as firm list, firm list of this, and the other is uh, data, data. Now I see that firm list is like this and data is like this and it has like five columns, right? Five columns. And we want to create a pair of the ID and the acquired name. So for each of the firm list, say this one, uh, maybe this one. I I create like index called two. Then I can pick out this one, the first of Florida Banks Inc. by using this code, because this is a firm list. And firm list acquire name, so this is a, this, this series. And we talked about it, I lock, the index lock two. So I want to get this two and this column. And the firm, I got this firm. And for each of this firm, We for data firm in data ID dot to list. What is data? Is here. Data ID is is the first column of all the series. Actually, I don't even need the to list, but I wrote it here. Uh, I can I can just use it in the in the in the series. But anyway, I use it here. So okay, it has like ten a hundred thousand entries. So it doesn't show the previous codes. But for the firm, I want to compare that firm with each one of these observations. Okay. And we name it as data firm. For each data firm in here, I first compare if 
compare the first letter and, it, and see if their first letters are the same. If I denote like this as a, you know, it has a hundred thousand. So I just uh, give a random number. Okay. Yeah, a hundred thousand, maybe. Yeah, this. Then the data firm is get for this. And to compare them, we uh, we first use a strip. Mm. Oh, I'm not comparing, I'm sorry. I'm not comparing the first letter. I'm comparing the first word, okay, of this, uh, of this company name, the first word. For this data firm, I use a strip to convert it to, uh, this, oh, uh, why do I use strip? Why am I using script? Um, then I just use this. So I can divide it to a list of different words. So the split is to divide this to a, why do I use a strip? There, there has to be a reason. Okay, uh, there has to be a reason, I just, uh, I just don't quite remember. And the first word of this, the first word of this list is Simon. Okay. And for the firm, the first word is first. Here, actually, there is a problem. We should use dot lower okay, because they probably are not the same. If, if one is uppercase and the other is lowercase, they should also be the same. Let me, uh, yeah. The first. And for, now I have, Simon then first. And now we want to check the ratio. And the ratio is 38 because obviously Simon then first doesn't look the same at all. And for the other ratios, again, they don't look the same at all. Okay. They don't look the same at all. In my practice, I usually uh, made the threshold as 70 or 80 or 85. If the score, all of the scores are greater than 70, I would think like the two phrases are similar to each other. But different databases have different issues. So every time I would make a stretch threshold of 70 then export the pairs of uh, firm names and see whether they are really similar or not if they're not really similar i will make the threshold higher until i reach a satisfactory result but there is a problem why do i why don't i just make the threshold 95 because if you make the threshold too high you will end up with a lot of firms not being able to be matched, okay? For example, for some of the firms in the, in the firm list, for some of the firms like this, you probably just go through all the 100,000 
firms here, and you don't even have one firm that gives you a, 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 a fuzzy ratio higher than 95. But if you find that some, for some strings here, even the fuzzy ratio as 85 is also pretty close. Like Fauci is the bank corporation. I'm just uh, give a check. See if I if I change this here, that's gonna be 98. Wait, wait, wait. It's gonna be 98. And what if I change this to Florida? Because Miami is in Florida. They're probably the same bank. But now if you find you see that the ratio drops to 85. And what if I change this to the bank corporation? It's gonna jump, it's gonna reduce to 79. What if I change this to and see you below 70? But still, the two can be the same bank, probably the same bank. Okay. So we don't make the threshold too high or too low. To run this, um, if we find the two firm names similar enough, we will replace the comma. This is a this is a method in string. This is just for example. I want to replace a comma with the blank. So the comma is replaced with blank. The reason that I want to replace this and this to blank is because we want to save it as CSV. CSV is comma separated by. So if you have a comma or this symbol there, it's going to be uh, the format will be uh, will be messed up, and uh, the 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 CSV file will not have the firm names in the same column. They will not, uh, they will not be nice. And uh, the, it's gonna be a mess. So that's why I replace the, replace the, the comma and the symbol as, uh, as, uh, as blank. Then this, um, this is not a major part of this code. So basically uh, I have the firm, I have the data firm, the two are, if they are too similar, very similar, then I just write them in a line. And the line have the firm, data firm, and the four fuzzy ratios. Okay, again, um, I use uh, if here, if uh, I actually don't need this, but I still write this. Uh, if it doesn't, so if the two pairs are not similar enough, I'll just pass. And I try, because I don't know what's going on in this code, that like, I don't know, like maybe for some of the, uh, I, I, I find this, for example, like some of the things here, I don't know what's going on. And there, there were 100,000 things here. And if something is going wrong, I just, uh, if it throws out the exception, the error, I'll just pass, okay? So this is, uh, this is what I do. And the output will be, export it as a file called fuzzy match results. Let's try it. And this is, uh, I use control plus one to comment it. And I'll just run this. Again, I use a start time and the time dot time and the time dot time minus start time to record the number, the, the, the number of seconds that I use to run this code. Okay, this is something else that you probably want to know. Let me run this without multiprocessing. Okay, and also let's take a look at the, the CPU.
is going to be probably one minute or two minutes. Let's see. Let's just wait here. I think we're going to have this view. So it's running, okay? It's running the and uh, calculate the nine ninety million, ninety million, almost one hundred million, ninety million pairs. Well, I'm drinking some water, and. Uh, We cannot do anything here because the console is um, is occupied. Mm, uh, probably like two minutes, I guess. Um, so during the two minutes, I can tell you something else. If you want to use multi-processing, you'd better to use this function called pool. The pool function is very easy to use. Basically, you write your code first in a for loop. Then you can write everything within your for loop as a main function. You define a main function and you put everything you follow here. Then you use a stylized poor function to use different CPUs to process all of these codes together. Because it like this is a four data firm in this list, right? No, I'm sorry. This is to use the index in the in the the firm list because the firm list has about uh, 900, 900 firms. So for if you use multiprocessing the the pool function, it will automatically and dynamically divide the these nine hundred firms into seven, if you denote seven processes, it will allocate the 900 firms into seven CPUs. And for each, C each CPU, we'll compare that firm in the, in, the, in the allocated list with a bunch of other, um, other firm names in the data firm. Okay, in the in the data list. Here you see that we use the 130, 130 seconds, about two minutes. And what do we get? We get this. Okay. So uh, it's, I, I, I'm not very satisfied with this. So they are not entirely very similar. For example, these two are not very similar. You you uh, you can skip also skip this part this this step and pick out the pair with the highest average of the four scores. Uh, something like this. These are exactly the same. So you have one hundred. And uh, what else? Let's let's see if there are some ninety things like this. Fifth third bank corp. OH and Fifth Third Bank Corp. They are probably very similar. And this is, uh, see, Toledo Trust Corp. This is a Toledo Trust. They're probably the same. And uh, let's, let's see. Yeah. First Interstate Bank Corp, California. And this fifth, uh, First Interstate Bank. If you don't want to export all of these pairs, you can simply just uh, use this one and calculate for, you know, you can just use group by or, yeah, group by and you uh, group by this column and you find all of the matched, probably these are the only two matched numbers with this and you calculate the average score and you require the average score to be higher than 90. Okay, then you pick up that uh, the highest uh, match. The, the match with the highest score. This is a fuzzy match. And uh, let's talk about, keep talking about the multiprocessing, the very simple multiprocessing. 
Let me comment it. Let, let me not comment it first. Compare this code and this code that we just used. What is the difference? What is the difference? We basically just put this part into a main function okay this part is exactly the same in as in the main function and we first open a seven processes seven processes and for each process we map the main function and this main function has an input of index which is this here and you put the range of this index into the map function as a second parameter is it simple it's very simple okay uh, you can mimic and use it and then you can use the multi-processing to process uh, the the match that we just uh, we just did so if i comment this and i use the multi-processing this one then how how many seconds would I use much shorter? Okay, um, you know this is one hundred thirty. If you divide it by seven, it's going to be about like twenty seconds, right? Twenty seconds. Um, of course, when you load the, the data and these kind of things, and you write into this uh, this uh, file, it may take some more. So so twenty more seconds, and you will notice a difference when you look at the task manager so previously our cpu was never used over by over uh 60 percent but now you can see when i click ran ran the file You can see that the CPUs are being used 100%. As it's very clear that all the CPUs are being used. Uh, I finally used uh, 43 seconds, okay. So uh, it's a bit longer. Maybe I should use this. Uh, sometimes when you reduce the number of processes, the uh, the CPUs will not be, uh, I don't know. Like, this is something that I, I don't understand in detail. Uh, sometimes it's gonna be even faster. Let me try it. Uh, and the results are almost the same. The results are the same because basically you just uh, may divide and allocate the different matching tasks to different CPUs to use. Okay. Let me close it. Yeah, maybe I use four processes and RAM. Uh -oh. uh, where's my Task manager, right? Yeah, task manager. Put it, this is faster. No, oh, actually, this is uh, slower, I think. Yeah, it's a little bit slower. And use the 51, 51 seconds, but still much faster than if you use a follow. 
And okay, this is uh, this is a fuzzy match and uh, the the very simple multi processing. And let me take a look at uh, you guys. You guys okay? You guys fine? Why can't I see the... So, I uh, see we have talked about yes. Uh, for the class, you can you can just watch the video online. And we have talked about geolocation. We talked about fuzzy match. We talk, talked about uh, the very, very simple one, uh, multi-processing and uh, web scrapping. Now let me give you a practice to use multi-processing. Okay. By the way, if you haven't installed multi-processing, you have to install install it first. I think I'm not sure if Anaconda has it already installed. Frankie, does it? Does it? Uh, is it? Is multiprocessing installing on the counter? Let me check. Or anyone, if you can just import this. Okay. Can you, can Actually, you it is already installed in ordinary Python package. So, okay. That's or great. Install. That's great. So, let me give you a very, very simple in class practice. Okay. I don't want to torch, torture you. Uh, you should be. You, sh you should be able to finish that within five or, or 10 minutes. Really, really easy. Um, So these are the two files. You can download it. So my in-class practice is just to replicate this code uh, by yourself. Not the, not this, not this uh, uh, multi-processing, but just the, this part. Uh, just create a, uh, and you don't, you don't even have to give, uh, to calculate the four fuzzy ratio. You can just use one fuzzy dot ratio. And, uh, and you don't even have to write it into a file. You can just uh, copy this part. You can just copy this part. What I want is that you independently write this part of code. And that is, that is enough. Okay. I don't want to torture you that much. And, uh, let's take a break for 10 minutes. And for 10 minutes, you should be able to just, uh, and by the way, let me upload my code. Yeah, please write it by yourself. And uh, I will give you a very, very simple task of uh, multi multi-processing. 